What are we working with here? <laughs> Especially I mean? against low blocks in tight spaces. What are we what are we doing here? Really? This is exactly this is exactly what I mean. You know really top teams, you should be able to do all of those things. Not not hundred percent. Cherry pick one attribute and say he can do that. The best I can say right now of Gallagher is that if you throw him off the right and tell him to overlap with the running, he might put in a good cross. He's, he's got a nice cross on him. That's about <laughs> it, bro. That's about it. He's got a nice cross on him. And and, he, and sometimes he might give you two, three goals from distance. And that's it. That's mm. it, bro. And I'm being genuinely honest. And I think a lot of Chelsea fans, will be, especially in here, they'll be like, yo, it's, it's true. But when you go outside and you'll go to the, you know, the ones that I've seen him since he was eight years old and... Coming mm. through the academy and all, oh, bless him. Yeah, bless him. Bless me, fam. Bless me with some <laughs> some, some fucking quality, fam. <laughs> no, man, just, man, just, man just got mad cardio, bro. You know, I'm like trying that, to see man. a Premier League title, you know, like shit. <laughs> you know what I'm saying, a man's a cross country runner, and and that's just what it is, bro. So like, when you're judging players, bro, oh. like, bro, just you just got to look at players and just be like, what do they have in it? Like, what are their weapons? Do you know what I mean? Like someone say mate, mate amount, Mason Mount to Liverpool. He's a, the perfect Liverpool player because he's got the engine mm. to run around. Dude play busy ball, yeah? Do you know what I'm saying? And you know what I mean? And he's got a bit of technical... He's got a bit of technical quality as well. Like he's not the most technical player ever, but he's technically efficient, bro. He'll score the odd free kick. He can strike the ball well enough. Decision making is probably not the best, but... He can play the headless chicken football that Liverpool want to play. Like, <laughs> Do you know what I don't like about Liverpool, right? And what I don't like what they've done. They've allowed the technical quality standard to drop so far mm. to the point where if you put in the work and you have the hunger and the desire and you track your runners and you put the work in and you you're, you're, you can still do this, you know? And I don't like mm. it. I don't like it because it's making a lot of excuses for people. And it's like, Ah, oh, but if, if Klopp had them, they would have done something. If Klopp had Timo Werner, he would have done something. If Klopp had Gallagher, he would have done something. Well, Klopp yeah, had because me. they, under, cause they understand, yeah, that Klopp, it's all about the system, bro. Oh. Like, they understand it's all about the system, though. <laughs> no, but Matisse, this is what the game is now. <laughs> it's what the game is now. You, you can't keep getting away with this. <laughs> you don't have to be a good footballer anymore, Matisse. They this can't is why, keep getting away with this, bro. This is why when I say yeah, with chess that Bruno oh. Fernandes is not a good footballer and then people pull out the stats to me, this is exactly why it's very difficult to have real football conversations, yeah, because it's like people always pull out numbers instead of showing you, like, what man's seeing, bro. Like, watch the game. Instead of watching the game, man throw out numbers. And this is the problem. So when I say if Klopp had him, if Klopp had him, yeah, Klopp, yeah, he plays, yeah, this counter counter-pressing transition football. What Klopp does, yeah, his players aren't the best technically, a lot of them, but what they do is, the reason why they create a lot of chances is because their football is highly based around winning the ball back in transition to attack quickly, bro, and catching teams, yeah, with their pants down, metaphorically speaking. That's what Liverpool do. Liverpool pressure you into losing the ball in dangerous areas, which in turn means, yeah, that they'll create a lot of goal-scoring opportunities against you. They don't actually slice teams open with the ball. Liverpool are more dangerous without it. Do you know what I mean? And there's... A, um, obviously, when you've got the Sadio Mane's, the Mo Salah's, the Gini Wijnaldum was big for them to do that. And also, mm -hmm. people sleep on how important um, Bobby Firmino was in that when they were doing it. Prime Liverpool. Absolutely crucial. And, and this yeah. is why sometimes I feel... And he was a midfielder, Matisse, yeah, playing so, in the so, post nine, but he wasn't really a striker. He was just an extra pressing machine. Yeah, that's what he was. Maybe Man City would never have sold Jesus to to Liverpool because they they knew them as a direct rival, whereas, whereas Arsenal kind of snuck up on them. But Jesus mm -hmm. would have suited this Liverpool team and suited Salah much more than a Nunes or a Gakpo. Because now you could say, right, Jesus, you don't have to score goals, but you're going to be pressing from the front. Because sometimes I'm watching Salah. I I think somebody put this clip up. Salah was pressing. And he's pressed his part, and then and he's obviously now coming towards the end. Like he, you know, not, he's he's old now, and you're not expecting really mm. Salah to be as much as he used to be pressing one. He presses his side, and he looks at Nunes, and Nunes is just standing there, and he's like, "What the what the fuck's going on? It's yeah, like, what are you doing? Why are you not pressing? Like if that was Firmino or Mane, they would have pressed with me. And the amount of goals that Liverpool scored from turnovers, I think they they led. There was some stat me and James was going through on talking tactics, and it was like. Year in, year out, they were winning the ball. Tackles and interceptions in the final third. Year in, year out, they were first, 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 first. Because Liverpool did never have, like, mad creator outside of Trent 
Bro, like, they've like, never had a creative been, midfield player, yeah, bro. They, their creators were their wide players. Yeah, and it's always been like win the ball quickly and then spin them and, and, and finish them. Mm. And now this they can't do that this season. So not oh, so now defensively they're worse in the forward line. They're worse defensively in the midfield because their legs ain't there and Fabinho mm. is falling off a cliff and Thiago in tracking runners. And then they're worse defensively now at centre back as well because mm. the injury pro mix and match partnership. And it's just like every part of the team defensively has fallen off. It's mad. Mm-hmm. And it starts from the front. Do you know what I'm saying? And I won't say Liverpool, but that's why I said even when Liverpool were in their prime, I used to find them boring to watch because on the ball they weren't very good. However, like Liverpool are like the counter punching boxer, yeah. But now their reflexes are gone. So now, now they're getting caught with shots. You know, like that. And that's just what it was. Like Liverpool in their prime, yeah. They weren't the most exciting to watch. Do you know what I'm saying? But it was crazy, bro. Because it's almost like they wanted you to have the ball so you could be vulnerable so then they could attack you. Mm. They didn't want to have the ball. They didn't want to build up from the back. A lot of the times, Liverpool were going from back to front, bro. How many times did you see Virgil or even the goalkeeper pinging the ball straight into the into the flanks for Liverpool yeah. and missing the midfield completely? Yeah, yeah, bypass. You know what I mean, missing it completely because that was their that was their style. So when you need to play that style of play, you need young players, you need fit players, and you need a lot of players because a lot of injuries comes with that. Do you see what I'm saying? So. Liverpool have not been able to spend in um, spend at the same speed, yeah, that their players are aging. And that's where the problem comes. So now they probably need about five or six players and they don't have the money to do yeah, that. the money, yeah. So I don't know. It's, it, does, it's a strange does, situation. Does this, now, does this now mean that, and this is why, and Liverpool fans, they obviously they don't want to hear this, but mm. Klopp plays a certain way. Klopp needs certain players to play in that way. He needs to bring the average age of the squad down tremendously. Yeah. And I'm not saying he needs a Todd Bowie type revival, but he needs something like that. Because you're talking six, seven players, and I'm not hearing that the scouting system is plucking them out of the sky no more. Mm. I'm hearing Bellingham's and Casado's and 100 millions and 70 million. So, and the centre backs as well are looking dodge. And the injury. <laughs> They're all injury and, and the thing is, there's no bargains now in the modern game, Matisse. It's like everyone's costing 50 million. Bro, bro, so he was a Liverpool rebuild. Yeah. A Liverpool rebuild, yeah. It's costing them 500 M's, bro. <laughs> because even, you know even I mean? the strikers that they've bought, I'm not I'm not sure on them. Because if they're not going to yeah. press from the front, the pressing statistics this season are disgusting. They're like 16th. They need to start mm. pressing from the front, or it's not going to work on the clock. Because that's how clock mm. plays. He needs Nunes to press from the front. He needs Gakpo to press from the front. If they're not capable of doing that, I didn't look at their, um, I didn't look at their statistics for for presses per night and all that shit before they signed because I again they ain't my they ain't my problem. But I didn't want them, and it's like technically when I watch them in, in general play, it's very stinky. <laughs> it's very very stinky. And yeah, if you're going to score goals, which both of them statistically, I think Nunes had one great season. Gakpo had stupid levels of of GA, isn't it? But yeah. even the shoot, even the shooting is awful at the moment. The one thing you're meant to guarantee, which is goals, because the rest of your play is pretty meaty. You're not even mm. given that. The finishing is nuts. I think Nunes is clear for big chances missed. He's like 6% conversion rate. Haaland's on like 25%. Bro, I seen a thing. Somebody put it in my group chat um, today. Let me see if I can find it with Nunes. I'm actually starting to feel sorry for Salah, you know, bro. I know, I know yeah, you yeah, don't yeah. rate Salah too high. No, 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 no. Listen, I already said it. Liverpool I feel sorry for Salah. Salah. I, feel I sorry said for Liverpool Salah are killing Salah. Salah's not playing worse. Oh, yeah. It's just that Liverpool... Are just worse, bro. Like I said, nah. um, XG, yeah, XG and goal scored. So Rashford's is 7.75 XG, yeah, scored 10. Holland is 7.28, scored 8. And Ketia is um, goals four. His XG is 5.1, so he's below his XG. So Holland and Rashford are outperforming the XG. Kane is um, XG is 4.5, scored 5, so he's outperforming his XG. Have a scored two, XG is four point three, so he's underperforming. Fernandez is three point nine nine XG, goal scored six, so he's outperforming his XG. Um, Darwin Nunes zero goals, XG three point six. Brav, he's the only player on this list with zero goals, blood. Ooh. And then Mitrovic has got three goals, XG three point six. Tony three goals, XG three point two eight. And Matoma, XG, 2.62, and he scored four goals. So he's outperforming his XG almost by double blood. So, bruv, that's crazy. 
Hasman's XG nearly four, blood, and he's got zero goals, blood. It's fucking crazy, blood. It's fucking crazy. The guy's awful. Mm. <laughs> I said, Nunes has killed them. What a legend. <laughs> Bro, yeah. you see the players outperforming their XGs and stuff like that, and then you see my man, like, underperforming bro, massively. Underperforming. Bro. bro, he gets so many damn chances, bro. <laughs> Sometimes I look at him and I think, if you came to Chelsea or Tottenham, and you were starved of chances. I don't know what would be your life, man, because it would be long. But this life would be so bro. long, bro. Like when I look at Man United, <laughs> we're not creating a lot. So it's kind of like, even though my guy Star Lord ain't really missing chances because he's not getting any, yeah. It's kind of like, all right, cool, he's not getting none. But Liverpool create. Creating's never been Liverpool's problems. Like Mo Salah's been up there with the most big chances missed nearly every season. And he's been um, top scorer a lot of these seasons as well because they create so much. He's allowed to miss yep. one in three and still be the top scorer. Do you know what I'm saying? So Liverpool not creating chances is not the problem. The problem is he's not good, bro. Mm. He's not good, man. Do you know what I mean? I'm glad that we didn't get him. Like I said, that was one of the best things Man United did was allow Liverpool to spend that money on him. Do not want him. And they're convinced they're getting Jude Bellingham even without Champions League. I don't know how that's going to happen. Good luck to them. What do you yeah, think? Yeah, of I, Bellingham? I, keep, I keep asking them questions. I'm, I'm, I'm glad we got Enzo over Bellingham personally yeah. for, what, for what we need and what we lack in our team, which is someone who can pass the ball, um, somebody who's 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 got that creative instinct about them and wants to wants to get involved in the first phase and. But then actually second and third, they got something to give in terms of the final pass. And obviously, he's got a long shot in him. And obviously, but Bellingham's more of a, you know, a crash in the box kind of player. I don't feel we need any more of that right now. You know, Bellingham's, he's, he's, a, he's a talent. But for me, Enzo, for me, is 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 the player that, yeah, I'm, I'm much more gassed about. And mm. I, he's the player that I would rather overspend on rather than overspend on Bellingham. So it's going to be interesting to see what Bellingham does and where he goes. Because I think certain teams he'll suit, certain teams he won't. If he goes to Man City, will it suit him as much as Liverpool? Probably not. But we'll have to see where, where he goes. It's going to be interesting. It's going to be interesting. I think yeah. I think he's one of them players that I wouldn't be surprised if when they get here, people start thinking, shit, he's not as mad as we thought he was. Yeah. You know what the beauty of Jude Bellingham is right now? No one's watching him every week. You know the one. <laughs> That's the... That's why, that's why he's so appealing, bruv. I swear to you, because if this brother was playing in the league, I feel like people will be talking about him, like, similarly to Declan Rice, where some people rate him, some people don't. Mm -hmm. Everyone loves Jude Bellingham right now because he's young, he's English, and he's not playing here. So most of these men ain't watching him every week. So when, when he's not having good games, nobody knows. Yeah. You know them ones there. No one knows. <laughs> it's just how it is. But then when he plays well... We get the good news, but we don't get the bad news. Like we, see we've seen, we've seen enough players come from Bundesliga, yeah. even like even the English players, and they come in. It's a, it's a shock. It's it's, it's it's tough. It ain't easy. 